in a train if 50 or 100 users are traveling and they all have the exigo app i can crowd source really? and i can have a much Accurate, accurate location than what uh, railways API will give wow. me. Wow! There are these campaigns which are let's say you know the long weekends throughout the year and you can do tactical stuff which is manually done around that. And then there is a whole bunch of very behavioral slash user action triggered automations that need to happen. Yeah. The challenge is to figure out more growth experiments and more such journeys yeah. which can give you that delta. Our site, like some of the pages, are being marked as poor experience, sure. right? So I can just Those get my team to fix them ASAP. Yeah, I don't have to okay, wait for enough. anyone. Today's conversation is with Manan Bajoria. Manan leads all things growth and marketing for Exigo.com, a consumer brand that most of us would have heard shaping up over the last 15 odd years as an amazing storyteller. They've also got some of the most mature practices in terms of how to scale segmentation, how to scale personalization, how to scale automation, and how to really focus on lifetime value from every new consumer they're getting. I especially love the fact that their top of the funnel ends up coming from more non-transactional sources where people are coming in to check PR statuses and train running statuses, and then they have a very methodical approach to graduating those consumers into transacting ones. And then, of course, there's a fairly aggressive uh, momentum in the industry with all the tailwinds around post-COVID travel uh, behavior of Indians. I wish them all the best, but this conversation is a very interesting one to look out for. Super. So maybe we'll uh, just quickly start with a bit of your own backstory. How did you end up where you did, and you know what's been the most uh, interesting parts of your journey? So I am your typical uh, B Tech plus MBA combination. I did my B Tech uh, in electronics from Triple IIT Hyderabad, uh, 2008 batch. Went on uh, and joined Motorola as a software engineer. Uh, and within college, I had realized that coding is not my cup of tea. So I definitely need to go out of the tech. uh frameworks so i uh cracked cad got into mdi gurgaon and uh, got an internship with bharti airtel and uh, then i got a pre placement offer with them and then i was with airtel for four and a half years across multiple roles so joined them as a typical management trainee uh and uh, did hardcore field sales uh, selling sim cards recharges getting mnp done uh, across uh areas like yamunanagar and jagadri in haryana and then uh, i was a zonal sales manager in rural rajasthan so i have roamed around seeker junjunu churu and the likes wow so yeah around 2 years of that uh, then i really wanted to move on to the marketing side i had mm. had enough of hardcore field sales so i got a chance to work within the marketing team of airtel dth okay so there i was responsible for driving and increasing the arpu like how do you move customers who are sitting at a 200 rupees monthly pack how do you get them to 250 or 300 wow how do you upsell them various top ups uh, let's say world cup is coming and you want to sell more and more star sports top ups right so how do you do that and traditional marketing um, call center sms uh, and the likes lots of data analytics i was here with yeah yeah lots of data because you're sitting on a very huge customer base right and a even a 10 rupees increase in a monthly pack across those customers is like a massive increase on your top line so and uh, then i also want to work there on the uh, retention piece like how do you upsell more advanced rental packages okay how do you get people to subscribe to a 3 month 6 month mm. or a 12 month package right because uh, in a dth monthly recharge what happens is if you stop recharging for a month let's say exams are there you have lost yeah. the revenue for that month right, right? So that was quite interesting. Uh, also, that was the first experience I got. We launched digital TV app. Okay. So that was the, my first experience towards app marketing, Mobile figuring app. out uh, app downloads and stuff. So quite exciting. Uh, was you doing for the first time yourself? So there's obviously a lot of learning curve, and there are not that many peers doing a lot of this by this time. So lots of first time. Definitely, definitely. So quite exciting times. And then after two and a half years of doing all of that, I got a chance to work with Free Charge. Uh, so uh, they had just got an acquired by Snapdeal, and they were launching uh, their wallet. Okay. So they had uh, till now been recharges and bill payments, and now I was roped into lead marketing for all the free charge wallet ecosystem. Okay. Basically, I work in driving growth for users' transactions for free charge wallet across both offline and online. So I got to work with partners like Book My Show, Swiggy, Zomato. And in the offline space, McDonald's, Shopper Stop, etc. The wallet essentially was the same concept as what a Paytm would subsequently look exactly. like. Exactly. So preload yeah, yeah. money and then pay for this. Correct. Exactly. So that was the whole hypothesis was uh, it, the acquisition flywheel is recharges, yeah. bill payments, and then you try to cross sell and upsell and get them to pay across so the free charge merchant ecosystem. The underlying consistent theme, huh? 
yeah 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 so that was again exciting like that was and also a, like a 0 to 10 journey sure. because we were starting from scratch yeah for the wallet thing at least exactly so but you had a massive install base of the recharge yeah, yeah, yeah. right so that was there uh, but how do you uh, work in getting them towards making transactions across sure. right and you have to actually incentivize a lot yeah. give out a lot of cashbacks and then everyone knows how things turned out there was a funding crunch and uh, then promoted to head the entire growth piece for free charge okay. uh, which then campus everything like acquisition engagement retention not just for the wallet but also for the core recharges free charge bill fund. payments sure. right so we did that uh, free charge got acquired by access bank things sort of slowed down and then mm. i moved on to lenska uh, so the like e-commerce anyways was uh, you're picking up by now. pace yeah ah, picking up pace as well sure right and omni channel e-commerce uh, was definitely further exciting right mm. like how do you marry that offline and online journey of a user sure. so uh, i was then roped into head the entire again growth piece there from acquisition and then engagement retention uh, at lenskart so quite fun i learned a lot there so in those so that is like years. yeah yeah so uh, scaled up performance massively figured out offline attribution of the app installs mm. that we were getting and then what sort of Indeed. ROI we were generating it's quite a puzzle for like, a lot of companies yeah 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 and then putting that data back to google and optimizing your campaigns basis that mm. right uh, like once you do that the kind of scale that we saw was massive uh, from yeah. a channel perspective so and so then really tends to talk about even pre xigo but yeah let's yeah, get yeah, to yeah. that and, and yeah and finally then i got this chance to work with xigo they were uh, like i don't been using xigo prior to that i always loved the simple ui yeah. ux very clean experience right and they had reached tremendous amounts of scale uh, like the trains app the number 2 app on the uh, play sure. store right so i got the chance to head the growth piece there i joined them almost 4 years back hmm. and uh, here i'm taking care of again everything related to acquisition from performance all the spends that we do everything organic so seo aso uh, getting our website and apps to rank sure. then uh, everything crm so all the customer communications that go mm. out retention whether it's sms whatsapp email planning out sale events discounting it's a huge part when it comes to flights of course. so how do you ensure and segment your discounts uh, right and In finally the pnl because that's the <laughs> yeah that's what it all adds up to correct so whatever you do at the end of the day the pnl responsibility is there across flight trains buses and all up awesome so well quite a diverse set of industries they clearly and i'm i'm so much tempted to talk about uh, the discipline at airtel where maybe the levels of offers were given were still very rational and you will always end up making more money from customers instead of giving away money like what probably your free charge clients might have asked you to do what yeah. was that contrast like yeah, that was pretty huge right like the only thing that we gave away with airtel was a one month trial so uh, like if it would be a let's say i'll give you a trial for one month for star sports right and then it will it'll and it'll work on auto renewal by yeah if you don't stop it so it'll basically get attached and people so will be responsible for the folks coming down with this whole auto renewal right i'm use it till <laughs> somebody stops you from doing it yeah so i think that the, the one I mean, it it, it was an opportunistic kind of play at one correct point. It, that's true and telecom has been like that right at one point in time you would remember the vast the vast thing yeah vast thing right it has been the like that they're like press 9 and you have a return and you start Correct. billing for it every month and it's hard to stop like it like the call tune will get attached and then you are paying right Correct. so and it's hard I, to stop it exactly so that was that but <clears throat> you would never ever burn money there yeah was, absolutely which is where uh, the habit of discipline and cultivated at airtel i'm wondering if, i don't know if you were able to use that at free charge but i'm hoping and assuming you're able to use that at xigo yeah so free charge was all about growth at cashbacks yeah, yeah yeah it was like cashbacks and cashbacks and and but the, it it works right like of indian course. consumer is a discount is savvy drug like we say yeah. it right like I mean, it I, just works puts on steroids yeah yeah and we ran offers like you pay with free charge at swiggy for 100 rupees and you get 100 rupees ka cash like people were just ordering like a very small pizza or a cupcake like and yeah. obviously the transactions went through the roof of course so it worked till it lasted basically yeah I mean, it's a good growth hack but you have to have more than that yes to, uh, to exactly make it work. Awesome. So let's let's get to travel and zoom into this whole subject, right? Uh, at the scale at which it is right now, last four years have been what kind of let's say delta has come in from a scale point of view in the last four years at at Exigo. So it has been massive. We are right now at five x the volumes and the revenues and the GMV that we were there pre COVID. Okay. okay. Right, and uh, 
uh, a lot of it uh, has come from in fact so yeah this is also pre covid to post covid so your journey was like yeah yeah I, like i joined and then covid happened 5 months back 5 months after right yeah. and like and suddenly everything went to zero sure because trains are not running flights are not running people are not going to open your app advertisement revenue is also gone so you're literally sitting at a zero revenue sort of Ooh. stage and yeah those were scary times covid was you can say a sort of also like a blessing in disguise uh, on the train side it actually helped even more on the digitization side yeah. brought in a lot more customers from offline to online because mm-hmm. uh, physical bookings were not really opened up for quite some time sure. digital uh, online was opened up so we saw that and the unreserved category which used to be there uh, was not opened up initially post covid okay so people were forced to make a reservation, reservation and mm-hmm. that to online right so we saw the volumes uh, when the travel opened up back uh, the volume scaling up pretty well plus uh, we also acquired confirm ticket yeah. so now uh, together uh, ixigo as a group uh, we now sell one in 10 tickets sold in the country wow on the train side right like for a space that huge that's quite a meaningful market share yeah yeah and and train is uh, the volumes are huge of right course. on a average basis around 14 lakh tickets are sold in the country on a daily basis sure on the train side so uh matlab amazing scale there uh flights as well uh, we have ramped up Mm. uh though obviously not these levels because flights was it's originally a also a lot more than competitive correct and it's quite competitive like yeah. there's a lot of discounting among stotas and it's at the end of the day it's a commodity product like the airlines are going to serve you there's only so far you can there's go. only so far that you can do but we did uh launch a industry first product called exigo short mm. and that was just after covid because there was a lot of ambiguity and uncertainty because the guidelines were changing uh continuously right like ever evolving is the word they use right yeah 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 like uh, like some, suddenly maharashtra would put out a notice that uh, you need to come up with a vaccine you need to come up with a certificate yeah. or it's shut down right there was a, so what we did was we uh, launched a no questions asked free cancellation product right so you pay a slight premium you pay 500 600 rupees more. sure and till 24 hours before departure you can cancel your flight <coughs> and you get the full refund sure and we don't ask you any questions no doubt and, and was this backed by the airlines or was it like but <coughs> on your books it was on our books wow and okay. we were figuring out the mechanics as to what's that attached to we'll solve the consumer problem and we'll deal with the airlines yeah, yeah so for users it's like they press, press the cancel button and the refund hits right and the cancellation fees are huge when it comes to airlines where you get minimum 3000 to 3500 it's super weird still i just don't know why but it is and that's how they make money on cancellations yeah yeah, really? yeah. it's it's a huge part of uh, so uh yeah that was there uh, on buses as well uh, buses is another sector where that offline to online growth it's it's basically it's the least pan- penetrated online sector as of now okay. in india because so, all these bus stations will have those local agents and then exactly. people will buy tickets in this mode a lot more offline not planned as much i mean at that level of the audience is not planned in advance as much true so in buses you see maximum uh advance purchase day is basically for the next day and the yeah so the day after travel yeah yeah t plus So uh, but so we acquired Abibus uh, so they mm. were anyways the number 2 uh, in the country and our backend provider as well uh, yeah. uh, before acquisition right so we were anyways using their APIs sure uh, but now uh, Abibus is now closely integrated across everywhere yeah. confirm ticket app and website the bus funnel is powered by Abibus sure okay and our flight funnel is there in Uh, yeah. Abibus app and Most website. Most of these different properties, but then they're all running on the same underlying infra. Exactly. So, so there's no duplication sure. of effort, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, so confirm that. But from a marketing point of view, then are you still like maintaining these three brands and they'll continue to scale? Yes. Or? It because the TG is uh, sort of different. Like Buses TG different. is different. Yeah. trains you could still say there's there's an overlap between us and CT, but CT uh, is very strong in south. Sure. We are very strong in north. Have. So we actually did overlap studies between the two of us and we don't see more than 10 to 15 over percent overlap but there is a strategy you'll not let's say go aggressive with marketing exigo in south yes. someone you'll have correct to. no so we have basically kind bifurcated of, that like hmm. we'll not do a lot of brand in south okay. basically right performance it's okay so it's we'll meant manage. to stay this way that okay for some time to come at least in the visible horizon you maintain these three brands and they have their own non overlapping somewhat overlapping but largely non overlapping uh, focus areas positionings and strengths Exactly, and confirm ticket is also very very strong in distribution. So okay. if you think where is my train is the number one app on the travel uh, section uh, mm. right now on the Play Store, right? Confirm ticket powers the booking funnel in that app. I get it. So it's a very interesting platform play as well in some sense because 
while you're doing your own consumer front end, you're also having APIs and integrations across one of these places where the system is powered by you. Exactly. So, GPay, PhonePay, where is my train? All three, the train's funnel is powered by us. That's why it's not necessarily known as Exigo brand, but Exigo is still making the transaction happen. Yes. Interesting. So, the share of business, uh, will this still be your customer when he makes his uh, reservation? Will this be somebody yeah, yeah. in your CRM as well? Yes, yes. So, it by, uh, say, it's like, it's a very straightforward SSO that happens, right? Like, if you have already logged into PhonePay, and you open up uh, the, the, the confirmed ticket, it, huh. it's very seamless. So Okay, so from a data sharing perspective, permissions perspective, how does it work? The user will be the user of phone pay, but then he'll end up applying to a confirmed ticket for a booking. And then they'll transmit the whatever details that need to be transmitted and you have the permissions to engage with Correct, the so there's an OTP verification that happens because okay. I just can't verify the mobile so number, whatever. Huh. So users enters the mobile number, it's pre-filled, there's an OTP that happens. And user gets logged in and then the booking funnel is everything is the payment etc everything is being powered and, taken. and it's also from a data organization and permission to engage lens all of these are different entry points but ultimately coming to the same large data pool correct so that data unification across the entities has still not happened sure. because that's again a, it's a lot of work it's a lot of work and with the so, upcoming guidelines we'll have to again see how issues as well. yes. so these three entities are uh, structurally in a fashion not unified either exactly so there's still going to be that legal uh, angle as well Correct. fair enough but Trevor you know orchestration of communication and then downstream uh, value creation so to speak so this whole idea of retention and selling the guy who started with us should now be buying this this and this yeah this is uh, run centrally for all of these or how is this organized uh, no, so how it works is uh, each, uh, like Abibus, CT and Ixigo, they have their standalone growth okay. teams and we work closely together okay. uh, to ensure that a confirmed ticket is basically, let's say, upselling and doing everything to upsell and sell more and more flights to their sure. base. Uh, we are doing everything to upsell more and more buses uh, and uh, then… Lose your entry point is flights. Correct, because for, trains, yeah. Uh, yeah. so buses is basically powered by Abibus, sure. so we ensure yeah. that we do everything there. And then at the city side, they ensure that both flights uh, and buses, they are doing whatever Up they selling. can, right? In some sense, the entry points are slightly distinct and unique, but then uh, you will kind of cross over to whatever uh, the other person is providing within your platform and maximize the value from that lens. Exactly. But this is still within your ecosystem. So, you know, from a customer lifecycle maximization point of view and I've seen a couple of other travel portals do this mm. and you did mention in an offline conversation that you're doing a lot of this as well in terms of the uh, upsell from the time the ticket has been booked to the time the journey has happened. Yeah. So maybe a little bit of uh, narrative in that. Sure. So uh, uh, effectively what we're trying to do is there's a lot of waitlisted transactions that happen, right? So there are two sort of segments there. One is a person searches but everything is waitlisted, right? Or it's over like typically happens in a festive season right sure. so at that point in time when i realize uh, that the person is wants to go somewhere and there's no inventory available on the train side we figure out if the uh, bus inventory is available right sure. and we'll then send him a communication around mm -hmm. hey why don't you check out buses uh, because buses typically you have inventory yeah uh, similarly if bus is also not available or we know that he's a ac user he has booked ac tickets in the past uh, we try to upsell him flights also. Oh. So depending on that user's past behavior, or if we know that he was looking for AC or non-AC, so sure. basis that we and if availability is there, so you also have to check. At all times, this availability will always be a question, right? If exactly. sell me something which is not even available, it's a waste. Correct, and you have to check, right? Like there are so many train stations in the country, you'll have to figure out the nearest airport within a radius of that. Yeah. And then a lot of train users are not even comfortable if they have never even tried traveled with flights, Flight. right? Like uh -huh. we, we got some survey calling done. And they were like, it's it's sort of like a mental block. Ha. Huh, there's like uh, a mental block there for flights, like who will go to the airport? Right. Station is very close to my home. Mm. I'm traveling with five people, so the fare becomes Obviously. pretty huge, right? It's like crazy. so like we think from a one packs perspective, but they think from a family perspective. So uh, that upselling is not that easy. Sure. You know, just coming back for a moment to the starting point of this whole user engagement or rather the first entry point, travel is a need-based category, Yeah. right? So in some sense, you have to develop a degree of brand preference uh, before you can expect a lot of retention to be at play. So on one side, how do you drive installs? Because there's always going to be people who have a certain level of app of either yours or a competitor already on their phone. So how does that, let's say, incremental install now come from given that the penetration is already high? 
let's start with that so uh, on the travel side uh, the good part is the searches that happen on google and play store for travel related keywords is huge okay uh, so think about terms like irctc pnr status running status train mm. booking right so everyone goes to google or uh, play store to search right sure. and that is the focus area so we ensure that we are visible there at the top okay uh, whether it is app campaigns or search engine marketing right because the user is showing a very clear intent to travel something to travel yeah mm. and it's a so the utility features like running status and pnr status those are like the acquisition flywheel for us so okay. so people come in uh, mm. because they want to check their running status they want to check pnr status so we have a lot of users who will book from irctc but they will use our app to check the running status or pnr right. status because they are much more comfortable sure. and the kind of running status we have built so it's uh, a crowd sourced running status right okay so you know think about this in a train if 50 or 100 users are traveling and they all have the exigo app i can crowd really? source and i can have a much accurate, accurate location than what a railways api will give wow, me wow but you're actually tracking live location in your yes. app and yes. the user is okay with it and start killing battery it's working because okay. people are also checking right huh. there is a train Back like we have instances where the tt itself uses the exigo app <laughs> to check very interesting but this is the same league as google maps or ways kind of stuff did right cross source information and make it available and everybody is happy exactly and the more win -win. base you get the more you scale up the more accurate it becomes it gets yeah, yeah absolutely and you could apply the same thing to buses if with the right level of penetration potentially but you need need that yeah, you need to get like there train me there a lot of packs traveling in that same train right buses even that count is lower count is lower sure so back to the sole acquisition story so you're saying that all of these app store searches and google searches and there is enough new people doing this on an everyday basis Correct. from that side your funnel continues to become meaningful yes so the next step for us becomes is people who are coming in for this utility use case yeah. right how do i get them to make their first transaction on the app because there's that friction that i need to solve for and i am confident that if i am able to get them to experience the seamless ui ux at my end versus what they have been doing on the irctc side right the chances of them becoming a repeat customer are pretty huge because the aha moment is for me uh, is that when that user does that first train booking on the app sure So just zooming in, this guy is uh, currently booking on IRCTC. He's the one you need to switch from IRCTC to your platform. Yes. Beyond that, the world for now it's not really something that you're able to address. Ha. So first is get them to book a train ticket, right? Like he is IRCTC को switch करवाते हैं पहले. उसके beyond जो है वो उसके beyond छोड़ दो. वो offline वाला उसको छोड़ दो फिलहाल. Ha. मतलब offline वाला भी आएगा तो आएगा. मतलब मतलब वो भी check करने तो आए रहे. Sure. So it's basically how do you you have segmented communication basis that if you know that he's an offline, figuring that out itself is. challenge because you don't really you don't know. know the yeah. source of well. uh, tickets right so basically whosoever has not booked on my platform but has been checking the running status or pnr status that means he is traveling by train but he is not booking with me so how do jab travel kar raha hai tab to aap waise bhi in, in this session you can't do anything so next time he has to travel is when he'll book with you correct so what we trying out and uh, we basically do uh, is we credit some exigo money to the user which he can okay. use on his next booking and it will wave off the service charge on the next right. train booking because that's the materially that's the only difference between irctc and us they don't mm. charge a service charge but we have to charge a service charge because otherwise margins otherwise. to make yeah. right so we try to do that and we are trying a lot of journeys and experiments around that to make it as seamless as possible so that the first time you check a running status and we know that you have not booked there's a pop up that comes ki hey we have money paid, in your wallet money in your wallet the next time you want to book just book it and you will and this. you know till he ends up making that booking you will keep reminding that there's money waiting money waiting yes, money waiting exactly. money waiting so there's a trip journey which is there at the back end sure. across all the communication modes uh, we are we're going to hammer that point of course and not just that right so money is just one part like why you should book with us right that why is important Confidence as well so there's somewhere. a social proofing there so like uh, trusted by 15 crore plus yeah, friends, right? yeah. uh and we are the official partner we give you free cancellation so that's something that irctc does not have is a language lens to this as well language lens is there but it's not that big uh, mm -hmm. so while we get a lot of tier 2 tier 3 audience if i look at the google play stats 90% is still english okay 6 to 7% is hindi and rest long tail is telugu marathi tamil so someone who's otherwise anyway booking on irctc so is comfortable with english and that's okay to for you to stay with english yeah yeah, yeah. so we have eight languages in our app so sure person can choose whatever he wants but typically the installed language that we get the data from and whatever the person chooses it's broadly in this way yeah, still 90% is still in sure so from this whole you know confidence building credibility building kind of components we uh, look at the middle of the funnel as they call mm -hmm. it right uh amount of uh, let's say local celebrity users or any kind of 
content which ends up driving higher conversions from the zero to the one, the activation stage could be an interesting play to experiment. Yeah, on. so we last year we signed up with Jackie Shroff and Sunil Shetty. Okay, as celebrities. That's the celebrities who your audience resonates the most with. Exactly right. right? So they're like people know them well, and uh, they have been very uh, and it resonates with both tier one, tier two, and tier three. Right. It's, mm. uh, so we thought it would be a good. Combo and interesting. Sure. Obviously, we ran a lot of campaigns with them, uh, all the images, content, etc. So, uh, while we thought that that upside would be huge, uh, we did not see that huge an upside. There was a higher CTR, Delta, so higher right. conversion, uh, but that was in the range of five to seven odd percent. Okay. Not not beyond that. Ki, okay, ye to, this is wow. Okay. So that's there. Matlab, it works, but not to an extent that yeah, you would I mean, think. Yeah, we will. figured out how else. So in your uh, communication pieces as well on the zero to one side where there's money in your wallet, here see Jackie Shroff is also saying you should book via us. Is that something you would have experimented? Uh, yeah, so we experimented with, let's say, uh, 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 how to book video around, like yeah. where Jackie Shroff is there and telling the users as to okay. why, you, to should book, ha, why you should book. As well. What all you can do on Xigo, you can book hmm. flights, trains. So we had some content. Obviously, there's so much that you can do with a one day of shoot. Sure, of course. So, but yeah, but we tried to use them wherever possible. Uh, there was a lot of uh, photo shoots that were done and in, in using in various creatives and all. Yeah, and there was upside. There's upside. There is but, an upside. I mean, in terms of what is a, it's a delta you can maximize in this whole zero to one journey because the biases against the transactions are quite a few, right? He's not perhaps comfortable paying online to start with. Yeah. Now, thanks to UPI and GPay, that penetration is kind of covered, but. There's Pretty still good. going to be a lot of other mental blocks around the first train booking ever made on a new platform. Yes, and and like we we get a lot of calling done for this, right? Because this okay. is the key yeah. thing, right? Key Why are people point. they're using our app but they're not booking hmm. with us, right? So, uh, one of the use cases is a lot of people they get that like think about parents or slightly elderly folks, right? Like the tickets would be booked by their sons Children, and daughters yeah. and other folks. Yeah. But they would, uh, so they're not comfortable with the booking flow, but they're okay to open the app and just enter the PNR or enter the train number check to check status. their running status, yeah, right? Okay. So it's basically difficult to so get there because that. their yeah. digital journey is not that. Sure. Uh, we have a lot of ticketing agents. So the agents are basically, they will only book via the agent platform to get mm, their commission, mm, right? They will not earn anything from here. Uh, but for checking PNR status, whether it's a ticket confirmed, you are a ticket only book here, the user app. Of course. So in some structural sense, this will cap out in terms of how far you can go with respect to the activity because these are structural issues. The parents will never end up making a transaction. There will be a percentage of users who are great with their PNR status and train status sex, but they are not the ones who will ever transact. But then there's an inflow of people coming in every day as well, which are additional and will keep going downstream. Definitely. And there's a lot of people who are booking online on IRCTC, right? Of course. So, and IRCTC, for, obviously, there is a trust in the person's mind, right? That you will find the best availability at IRCTC because ultimately it's that's, there. Where, That's where the whole thing is there, right? And there are some uh, also challenges with respect to, let's say, Tatkal. For example, when Tatkal opens up, right? For the first 15 minutes, it's only That's available on IRCTC and not yeah. us. So there are some challenges there, uh, but there is a growth that is continuous. You have enough headroom available still for now, at yeah, least. Yeah, there is a headroom. Tell me something about the nature of competition here because what you're trying to do, uh, the same guy is probably going to be attended by five other brands as well. And everybody wants him to make his booking with them and stick with them. How do you address this? See, on the train side, uh, so the good part is there is no discount. There's not a lot of discounting out there. Like right. there's zero discounting at our end, sure. barring that first new user discount that we might give and that too on the service on charge, the service right? Service not charge. on the mm -hmm. fare. We don't have uh, any coupons, etc. that you can do on trains, right? And also the elasticity is not there for that train audience because sure. the ATV is around 1300. Even if you give a 30, 40 rupees ka discount, it's not that material not to enough. make an impact versus let's say a flight audience where you're giving a 500, 600 rupees on a 5,000. Sure. So there the probability of a user doing that, checking the fare across three different apps hmm. and then figuring out which one is the cheapest, that is obviously there, right? Uh, but still, there's a, there are a lot of people who become comfortable with an app. Sure. Just book. They don't care of that 100, 200 rupees <laughs> delta. Second transaction onwards, the comfort would probably drive a lot of repeat behavior. Yes. To get to the zero to one stage, uh, your funnel is getting built because of this PNR and the train running status apps, and that yeah. funnel goes downstream to you. So you understand that's part of the journey. You might not always have visibility on what else is happening in his life. But mm -hmm. from a, the survey that you did, the telecalling that you did, what was the holdback? You spoke about the parents not doing it for themselves. Yeah. The agents are doing it on their agent interface. That was two, but they still use this app. Anything else that emerged as a insight which became actionable and you got some results out of it? So uh, I think broadly, uh, 
the third but the third was the trust factor like they trust IRCTC sure. uh, and again that's something we you can't solve you, you can't really quickly but it'll take time correct so we have been focusing a lot on that social proof if, proofing aspect uh, to basically solve for that like uh, like millions of users are booking sure you just need to try it out for once. once so that's something which is in progress and we are trying out various ways to talk about it and about one thing that has worked pretty well for us is the bottom sheet that uh, we show as soon as you launch your app right so we show that why you should book trains for xigo to a segment which is never ever booked but mm. we know that they are checking their pnr and running status right yeah so we did a test versus control there to people who are not being shown and to people who are being mm. shown and we saw a clear 10% incremental jump uh, on the test row okay by just telling them that hey why you should why train should book. why you Fair should enough. because so a lot of people achha, the third way, a lot of people were not aware possible. that awareness was not there that you could book train tickets mm. they always thought of us as a PNR and running status app because yeah. that's what we started with six years back, right? Even though we have a search form on the homepage, it's not yeah. an icon. We have a form right there. Two lights first, hote hai. so exactly. people go into the app with a certain expectation. They only do that and not do anything else. Correct. Awesome. So we uh, managed to kind of get a decent level of funnel on the first reservation side of things. Hmm. And now, in terms of the understanding, the consumer, the, the AC, non-AC, how many days before the travel, size of family. enough data points to start making us some segments out of it yeah right so what is your uh, you know level 1 lens on slicing the audience to say that okay i'm going to treat these people differently or analyze these people differently across these metrics how you do segment this out got it so on the train side basically class is something definitely we look at ac versus non ac right uh second is the advanced purchase day cohort uh, if a user typically books just in time one or two days before or they are like booking well in advance 30 days 45 days 60 days uh then third is the multipacks bookings so is a six, solo traveler versus a family traveler he, he normally books for three to four people at one right and uh, fourth is we try to find out repeat patterns mm. so let's say if it's a student who typically goes back to the hometown every month sure right so we try to find out these uh, cohorts where it's a repetitive sort of a journey and we are trying to solve for that by sort of making it like a one click booking process if you are very yeah. very frequent right so we have done it for flights where if we know that you book a delhi bombay flight every morning on monday and then you come back on a friday night and we know that you take a vistara flight and a premium economy so the next time you do a search right we auto select everything for you that hey it's auto selected traveler name is this this flight this flight and just click here to book very cool so number of clicks is substantially reduce the funnel so much better exactly Staying within the zone of uh, segmentation, and you spoke about student as a persona that you discovered, or a business traveler as a persona that you discovered. Is this something that you can uh, almost always uh, derive from the data patterns that you have? Because it starts to get very fragmented, right? A uh, advanced traveler with family versus a uh, short notice traveler which is single. If you start slicing the audience, you'll end up with what twenty, thirty, forty segments, perhaps. Yeah. The more variables you add, the more fragmented it gets. So, what's your view on uh, translating this into either the personas where you can kind of intuitively relate behavior like the student behavior or the business traveler behavior mm. or things that now start not seeming that intuitive so because most companies when they attempt segmentation it becomes hard to draw a line as to you know how fine and how small can you make it because then the accessibility gets compromised true so there's always an overlap between various segments right because that person might be traveling solo as well as might be traveling with family for leisure trip right so uh, ultimately what you do is you try to figure out a behavioral how many what is the majority of the t- bookings are related to a business uh, yeah. because the majority of the bookings are solo versus a leisure sure. travel right and then you basically pick them in buckets basis that so whatever is that behavior which is being shown the maximum number of times is basically we bucket using that so in some sense the user attributes will be function of what is the past behavior that's shown and then yeah. you will atti- attach a degree of propensity scores to this guy and then Utilize that as a base for subsequent. Correct, engagements. and then you tag tag that user as a business, a family, a student. So the tagging is being done. Yeah. Okay. What are the different tags going to look like? Uh, broadly, it's one. Uh, it's a family. It's business. It's solo. It's students. Uh, then uh, it's agents. Like okay. So we have people who book more than thousand bookings in a year. Sure, of course. So like, clearly, clearly, yeah. So what's up? Not possible, right? Yeah. So there are agents that we do. Uh, then uh, we also have. Uh, uh some sort of uh, discount seeker sure. tagging as well like yeah. you only book when there's a bank offer sure. for example and not the any other days right yeah 
uh, then uh, and then there's tagging off about and that's simple power user code sure. user right like people who and it's a function of number of bookings made in a certain time window yes so sort of RFM influence correct and the other part is more behavioral influence this is RFM influence so combining these two now you have like a lot of actionable plays available so you know maybe a good idea to pick up your favorite examples from this whole segment to the orchestration of what happens downstream now you figured that I'm a family user what's going to happen next so uh, if you're a family user, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at past frequency, right? So typically on an average, uh, let's say you travel every three months, right? To a destination, like Goa, etc. Sure. So, uh, and let's say there's a, I'm running a, I'll, I see that a long weekend is coming up and it has been three months that okay. you travel, right? So there's a Gandhi Janti long weekend that is coming so I'll be sending out a email and a push communication to you uh, with a special offer, uh, which is uh, there for booking for that long weekend. And with some suggestions, uh, right now the suggestions are not personalized to that level that if I know that the person has already visited those three destinations, I don't show them that. Sure. So it's still generic from that perspective that, okay, October, these are the top five destinations that people go to. So, but I mean, it's still from an origin point, it'll still be personalized or not yet? Not yet. Okay. So uh, we can get there. Yeah, the we can we can get there. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's there. Uh, and uh, yeah, and you also get an in-app talking about that. Right. So next time you launch an app, we'll be showing you that, hey, hmm. uh, here's a special offer to book flights to this and there's a long weekend. Left. So Maran, help me understand this. A lot of what you are doing is going to deal with a lot of automation in some sense because there are these campaigns which are, let's say, you know, the long weekends throughout the year and you can do tactical stuff which is manually done around that. And then there is a whole bunch of very behavioral slash user action triggered automations that need to happen. Yeah. How does that world look for you? So uh, there's a lot of stuff which is automated. So think about, let's say, the onboarding journeys. As soon as someone installs an app, a welcome journey to get them to log in or sign yeah, up. Yeah. And once they do that, getting them to reach their first aha moment or getting them to at least first do a train search. And once they've done that, then figuring out uh, so, rest of the stuff, right? Then there are automated journeys for all funnel drop-offs. So whether it's a flight funnel drop-off, a train, hotel, bus, right? So Pretty standard stuff. Pretty standard. Yeah. Then we also have uh, journeys for increasing the M1 repeats. Okay. So if you have made a booking, how do I get you to make another booking in the... Yeah, that goes a little bit in the face of need base as a category. If I'm not looking to travel, you can't make me travel. Exactly. So that is there. Like the efficacy of that is... Very only less. go so but far. Huh? You can only go so far because there's a lot of involuntary. Change. Correct. If you don't want to go, you'll not go. Yeah. Uh, but still, uh, at the but least, I can. If he's going to travel, you make sure that he remembers that. Yeah. Yeah. Around. He remembers, and I'll give them a special offer so that at least it's in their back of the mind that Exigo has sent me Kutsu something chandra, exclusive. Huh? So if they want to travel, they will at least go ahead and uh, use us, right? So and then all my. Uh, cross sell and upsell journeys are automated as well. So the okay. thing that I talked about, let's say a train. Who a user was booked a waitlisted transaction sure. and I come to know that it's not getting confirmed the prediction chances are lesser so that cross sell of buses mm. that would happen is automated at D-2 so, yeah. uh, so that is completely yeah. automated the hotel upsell post booking if you have booked a flight you have booked a train that's again all like automated you hotels. so I mean, obviously you've been around long enough you've uh, matured yourself in the system as well so uh, all of this business as usual stuff is now yeah, yeah that is out. all BAU the, yeah. the challenge is to figure out more growth experiments and more such journeys yeah. which can give you that delta. Hmm. And in terms of uh, the interfacing with the product itself, because you mentioned this whole Vistara Friday, Monday use case, some of them end up needing product interventions, right? Can't be purely a CRM or marketing play. Yeah. How do you orchestrate that? What kind of interfacing? Does growth team also have engineers that uh, kind of do some of this stuff? How does it get orchestrated? So yes, yeah, so we are like a full stack growth team. I have three growth engineers in my team. So I don't really have to wait for the product sprints to happen. If it's a small change. Sure, so my growth team can do uh, a lot of stuff. Typically on the website, GTMs, everything is sorted. Mm. Uh, journeys, API integrations, data to uh, the automation software. Right? Right. So all of that is being yeah, handled yeah. by. Only when I need something which is which requires an app effort, right? App right. development or a front-end effort on the mm. app side is mm. when... Uh, so we have this quarterly roadmaps that we make. Of course. And uh, we then sync, and, uh, sync up and discuss with the product teams. Prioritize, like we will always have yeah. that long list of tasks. Of course. And always. only half of them will anyways get picked. So we prioritize them, get them sorted. Well, that's a story for everyone. But the yeah. fact that you at least have three growth engineers means at least some of the stuff which is uh, able to be in your control and move much faster around. Definitely. Like on the SEO side, uh, anything to do with Core Web Vitals, or Google rolls out an update or 
our site like some of the pages are being marked as poor experience sure. right so i can just Those get my team to fix them asap yeah i don't have to wait Fair for enough. anyone so in terms of uh, the fact that this is a need based category and the brand side of things will continue to remain a way of making sure the recall is in place and then this uh, cross sell upsell has experimental spaces right okay we've tried these five things and this is what's going to happen next you've launched holidays and you've launched a couple of hotels as a new category and there's been more from a product catalog itself that is coming in the uh, as a growth let's say lever that people are so far doing these five things with us maybe if they can do these three things more that should help matters of increasing the uh, average order value or Uh, the lifetime value the transaction value how does that uh, roadmap look for you how does that those components look for you yeah so i think uh, so hotels is something that we have just launched this month uh, holidays as of now there are uh, no plans but maybe down the line once okay. we have sorted the hotel piece so the biggest challenge uh, for us is we have users coming onto our platform right so more than 50 million users uh, and if i talk about exigo group it's more than 70 million users who visit the exigo website or app and you are launching these new products uh, so hotels is up so the first and the initial challenge is how do i get a majority percentage of these users to experience the hotel fun sure right? so and once they experience and if the product is good then it's basically a product led retention right you become mm-hmm. comfortable and you see that okay it's a good experience the inventory is there there is a decent new user discount that i'm giving just so that that hook is there and that friction is slightly reduced from a user standpoint mm-hmm. so but it's also about creating a lot more entry points uh in the app for a new category right so think sure. about hotels for example yeah. so i know what a user's last booked destination is sure. and uh, so if he has booked a bombay ticket the, there would be a widget which starts showing on the home screen talking about bombay the hotels, hotels in yeah. bombay if he has not booked but he has searched for either a bombay hotel or bombay flight or a train then a similar okay. widget can uh, come right uh, then there could be widgets for hotels which are near your hmm. location or best selling hotels or top deals so the and idea is the app home screen is the biggest promotional space that you have for an app which gets so many millions of yeah, app open yeah. every day right so the bottom sheet that you show and the home screen becomes the biggest channels that you can actively use to drive more people to any new product that you are going to launch you know, I'm going to double click on this a little bit man because you mentioned the word product led retention uh, and you spoke about the fact that there's enough inventory depth and there's enough amazing product experience right so in some sense uh, your team is the one that's watching the retention on some of these components that people who attempted a hotel and they closed the hotel uh, booking that might have to do with the fact that uh, not every geography will have as much inventory depth perhaps and you yeah. start to see some funnel drop offs which look different Hmm. this whole interplay between your team's observations from the ecosystem and then the ability to give feedback to the supply side of the team to make sure that those gaps are beeped up how does this play out right now it's in a very nascent stage because hotels is just sure. launched but typically we one uh, there is async communication that anyways happens then yeah. we figure out something that hey here's an insight that we saw so we tell that to the hotels team there's a weekly sync up with the hotels product sure. flights product and trains product team as well with the group okay so we discuss and brainstorm ideas and figure out or whatever issues or whatever things, discovery. whatever discoveries that we make right so we basically uh, so that those team can work and figure that out mm. and optimize it further hotels being a very very long tail it actually requires a lot more data science uh, sure. behind it right because there are like thousands of cities in india inventory would be different across and you'll have to do benchmarking with your competitors as yes. well do you have the correct inventory are you pricing it lower are you pricing it higher sure so uh, i think but again going by once you start getting a lot of data a lot of bookings uh, you figure out what are the top cohorts what top cities top hotels being booked mm. and you start with them you try to figure that out at least that'll move the needle more that'll move the needle more so you try to ensure that those things are at least sorted and then you move on slowly to the long tail so that says the whole data team will be a part of the growth org itself or hard and where does it sit uh, right now it's more from a uh, lob perspective so hotels will have one we'll have person it. growth has one person flights train so it's like a sure. uh, lob structure so i reach out to the flights if i need some specific data related to flights mm. i reach out to the flights data science guy uh so it's sort of structured like it's structured that like that and it does a job for now and there'll be overlapping areas that will always happen and yeah okay. yeah but i think down the line in future there needs to be a centralized <laughs> data team who can just get that macro view right and figure out what's happening across yeah. the board so it's interesting is uh, the whole interplay of getting people into the system and then the multipath because right now your journey seems to be slightly more linear in nature 
but as you kind of grow and maybe potentially start marketing the hotel product as well as an independent entry into the app that will become a different fork right so people might just start coming in for hotels exactly and and that will happen over time once people get that comfort that yes. exigo you can also book hotels mm. they have a good experience uh, in their first booking right and they also get introduced to the hotels entry point you know what i've also seen people in uh, the category do essentially is around uh, all the uh, touch points from the ticket booking to the actual travel and that's where probably we spoke to one of these companies which manages the airports mm. and their interest was that if you become a ticket platform provider mm. i can do the insurance to the cab to the uh, airport porter to the pranam service which will let you inside the airport slightly faster and a seat upgrade and a meal booking and all of that is part of the journey is that something that you focus on and is that something that you're seeing incremental incremental value because you know i get demanded of your airtel uh dds times hmm. 10 rupees extra on every ticket with 50 million people coming in yeah. there's a lot of money to be made sure so the ancillaries on all sides right like if i talk about flights seat and meal is something which is already there sure that's something which is already standard, standard. yeah a uh, cab right now uh, we have a entry point we have tied up with cab aggregators uh, sure. so you could if you want book a cab uh, but i think the user behavior is that you still <laughs> open up a uber ola or a blue smart okay. rather than thinking about a uh, ota platform as a yeah, i need to book my yes, airport so right cab. right hmm. so there's a behavior change uh, that's uh, still there and that's difficult to do one of the uh, things i found is very really fascinating is uh, i use a lot of this app uh, cab booking because yeah. somehow the reliability of a cab from an ola or an uber given that it's a little bit of a compromised situation right now yes. ends up being the reason for me to have a more reliable play with my ota that initial trust there yeah, needs the to be there right it's the first be. time it has to be very very flawless and seamless yeah. and uh, again so th- and that can only happen so service if- level efficiency reliability and you might not be as confident about the aggregators as you need exactly. to be exactly so until unless sure. you own that entire funnel it becomes a very difficult but ultimately to- as an aggregator i mean you're ultimately a travel service provider you know control the flights or the trains or the buses or whatever else and yeah. if the experience there is compromised it I mean, in in case of flights it doesn't hurt you but in case of some of these companies might start to hurt you or uh, exactly because people have options here right flights may they they only have to change I mean, between the star or they'll hit air india they'll not hit exigo for whatever goes wrong but Correct. if a cab doesn't come on time and they miss their flight it's, then it's, it's probably exigo so bigger issue yeah. yes sure but uh, from a category perspective and you know uh, given the amount of travel that's happening lately i'm sure you spoke about those little 5x lift yeah. in uh, the post covid scenario indians are traveling like crazy and they're doing it within india as well as internationally uh, is that a lens that you also apply in terms of uh, a persona that's coming into the application and he's known to be an international traveler probably at a certain frequency maybe for work maybe for personal but then that's how this whole uh, experience itself would look a little different you spoke about the family user going to go every 3 yeah. months and things like that but you know what else could happen from uh the audience persona ecosystem itself so international uh, definitely is a use case where there's a lot more uh, cross selling to be done there uh, so if i know that you are searching for international tickets or you have booked an international ticket with me and then you definitely need a visa yep. right so we have partnered with visa to fly for that sure. so there's a cross sell that's going there to the seamless. user that's very very seamless uh then you also might need a forex card sure. because uh, so we have tied up in neo for that yeah. so yeah. there's another upsell cross sell that is happening sure. hotels is anyways there yeah uh so and we are also in talks with the uh, these uh, international sim providers sim cards sim course. cards so that's the another cross sell so in international there's a lot more that you can actually straight forward play yeah, yeah and some of the categories also got mature so consumers also somewhat used to finding all of this at now one place yes. but from an innovation lens what is it that you think is the most exciting thing coming in if you're able to reveal that yet ah uh, so i think the most exciting thing and the, it's uh, it's already launched uh, right. right i think that has to be plan uh, which okay. is a chat gpt powered itinerary planner that uh, it's right now in beta hmm. uh, we are going to fully launch it pretty soon but uh, i think you should just try it out xigo.com/plan okay and it gives you very detailed customized itineraries right just to share you an example yeah. right? so let's say you want to go to switzerland for a week and you tell him that okay i'm give me a seven day itinerary for switzerland i'm traveling with my wife and kid so it will detail out the itinerary and will ensure that there is something in the itinerary for the kid something in the itinerary for the wife and and you can also tell it that hey uh, i am i like more historical stuff or i like more adventurous stuff and it will also tell you that okay if you are visiting this particular let's say mount jamfro here's a restaurant that you must try so you're okay. going there in the morning have lunch here these are this is a good restaurant and here are the links for the google reviews etc 
here's the weather forecast and it's a very detailed so sure the initial step is basically at least helping the users in their pre planning discovery. Hmm. discovery point right like please sort that itinerary creation aspect for us and the next step would obviously be to then one click book one click booking day. for each and everything but this would let you into the space of restaurant reservations as well as perhaps activities which is a large segment now but i'm not seeing xigo play there yeah yeah so the restaurant is more about just giving them Discovered. the information i am yeah. not going to go into that activities again uh, you could tie up because again it's yeah, a very very long tail it's it's very yeah. difficult to do that but no you but have the clothes and the bunch of people are doing this you have to head out etc out there yeah. so you could tie up and i think with them but initial level just flights and hotels and then along with international visa and a lot of this stuff right there's a significant chance mm. there's a lot of stuff that you can just with a one click uh, tell the user a lot of stuff yeah so somewhere this is i mean exigo to me stood out for the ease of use as a product experience as well as a brand story because it was always very content led as a play so that's kind of where i'm uh, curious to understand that when you have to drive stickiness across the slightly higher value audiences because international travel i'm sure is a uh, more profitable play compared to a bunch of other things i would imagine mm-hmm. so so in that sense when you look start looking at uh, the contributions from each of these spaces or one train ticket would save you a convenience fee probably you'll get a lot more than that across the international so now that you are talking about the whole pnl aspect of it and as mm-hmm. a company level you have energies allocated to different things how do you uh, look at let's say the maximal return on effort investment across all the different things you're doing so at the end of the day we look at our cac ltv cohorts cross each and every product uh, okay. line right so if i'm spending an x rupees on acquiring that users on the flight side uh, and we also look at what's that cross selling happening like if i've acquired that flight user in the next 6 months not only the number of flight bookings from a repeat standpoint is he also booking a bus or a hotel or a train right sure. so a combined ltv of that user uh, is what we look at and then there is a uh, basically a roas that comes uh, in right more over a period of time not just the first transaction exactly so you can look at at m1 m3 m6 sure. level but obviously the data will take some time to mature yeah. and the category being not that frequent have Has to look at the lo- at the longer cohorts right so for each what that gives me is a cac value which is sort of like a break even so i yeah. know that if i'm acquiring this user from this channel by paying this x rupees i know that i'll break even in the next 3 or 4 months you know given the scale at which you are already at and there is always going to be this next batch of people who are coming to the internet for the first time and that's where the cac question becomes interesting because on one lens people will optimize for the cost per install of the application and be done with it and then there's this whole downstream funnel on uh, engagement mm-hmm. or the other lens uh, these sources are giving me higher quality installs versus these sources are giving me lower quality installs because the m6 of these guys is very different from the m6 of these guys yeah is that a lens that you currently apply or intend to apply how does it work so one uh, all the optimizations that we do from a performance standpoint are on the booking side of things we don't optimize on installs at all Can you say booking is the first booking or the first booking or a repeat booking? Like we also see a lot of users who will who had the app, uh, they had no travel plans. They made a booking, they uninstalled the app after that, and then after six months when they again have to book, they will go back and go back. Yeah, install, right. So sure. I'm okay with That's getting fine. that user back as well. So we look at that, and then we obviously look at the channel wise uh, LTVs. So uh, okay. Google, which is a very high intent based channel, versus let's say a Facebook, which is more of a slightly push channel, discovery, right? Yeah. Discovery channel. So the LTVs would vary. Uh, yeah. across those two so we look at that and then my cac bid on google would be different from what i'm bidding on facebook right because well the ltvs are different uh, for those same so yeah it it varies across channel to channel right. but does it also then vary across uh, um within channel campaign to campaign because you'll see different intensity of bids across different sub categories oh uh, so uh, that depends on uh, what's that objective of that uh, campaign being right sure. so on like typically we don't do any retargeting on okay. the digital side right it, really? we we ran a lot of tests yeah and uh, the incrementality there was just 10% so before i and because you have a fairly rich crm engagement anyway happening exactly so when i joined exigo we were spending a lot on facebook remarketing right i mean okay. remarketing is anyways the bread and butter for facebook of course meta so and and facebook gives you an option to do this incrementality yeah, test right correct. so i i ran that for a month and we saw that that incremental conversion on test versus control was just 10% so so while wow. the guys were very happy seeing that lower cost per booking from the ad but you actually have to multiply by 10 to get that actual number yeah all that money that spent on just display exactly so it's it's not worth the effort mm. because uh one people take their time they do a lot of this uh, just discovery and like you will check out fares for goa let's say across the three different websites right now 
but maybe you will discuss with the wife family and then book it over the weekend or if i start showing you ads but in the in those three days the argument could be more in favor of making sure that there's recall but then that's what you're ensuring by your crm anyways ways exactly once hmm. you have logged in anyways i have more revenues and Correct. more ways to reach you out right you why do i force a log in by the way so i was checking out the app just today morning before this conversation yeah. and I, i figured that for whatever i want to try you need me to log in before i do much it's not mandatory for booking it is mandatory there will be a pop up that comes you can always close that yeah but the wait seems like there's a close button was small tiny there so i'm assuming this so, is also a result of some other test thing that you know somebody is coming here he's not going to ditch the app and go away because he's asking for a phone number the moment you have I, a phone number the possibilities are endless endless in terms of uh, being able to engage so very interesting but you know the reason i was asking this question is you know like competitive space yeah right and when we talk about a uh, higher value user the competition gets that much higher so if the intensity of uh, acquisition effort for the international traveler is a uh, a lot more compared to the intensity of engagement for let's say a train ticket booker who's probably going to book once in 6 months because the kind of money you'll make from him is very little mm. so what i was trying to understand was this linkage of lifetime value to how you orchestrate campaigns on the acquisition side and is there a science to it that you've gotten to and is there a direction you're moving in got it so ultimately what you are saying is basically optimizing for the tros because that tros might be very very high for an international user versus for a, let's say what's tros again oh sorry matlab basically <laughs> it's a it's a google term that's sure. there it's basically optimizing your campaigns on a target return of ad spend okay so i'm spending x rupees i tell the campaign you get me 1000% return or 100% return yeah but that's also across multiple transactions so it's a, still across a single transaction uh that's basically on a 30 day attribution is what they look at right So uh, right now the problem is this scale is also different. Like like the international guy in one booking would give me a lot, but the number of international travelers is also sure. very less versus let's say yep. uh, train ticket, right? There are like so many train tickets. So that would be an absolute budget question, but perhaps more of a per transaction kind of layer. So what the way we look at is we have a product level CM uh, that is yes. defined, right? CM uh, is contribution CM margin. CM is yeah, sorry. CM is contribution margin. Uh, so c- contribution margin two, which is after performance spends sure. uh, that we are doing, is what we try to optimize mm-hmm. on. And there's a defined target. And that's and across categories and channels combination. Exactly. So that's okay. across uh, for flights, for trains, for buses, for hotels. There's like uh, four different CMs that are out there, right? So that is where we right now optimize and scale up as much as possible. So, but. I mean, you'll also look at different campaigns' ka contribution margin. Oh, will this be a unified? Let's say from all go for Google. No, no. So that, anyways, is there. So I would look at what's the CM from a Google uh, campaign, Channel a UAC level. campaign, or a search yeah. campaign versus okay. a Facebook. So that is, anyways, there. But in totality, if I'm looking at a macro sure. uh, a view, it's more like okay, I am spending this X rupees, and am I making this Y CM for this month or not? So at the blended level, you'll still be able to kind of keep a discipline intact. Exactly, and there is this freedom. Mm. uh let's say i i'm able to scale up well uh, right on the flight side and i'm do, i'm able to double down on the performance sure because the scale has gone up and uh, the baseline is moving i i can actually have that same cm uh, despite doing double the spend on yep, performance right so that's there where that the growth, growth engine growth engine comes into play so how number obsessed are you manan is this something that you watching like daily every morning and it's uh, what you kind of yeah breeds? yeah i think growth at the end of the day is all about numbers So, like, I was daily stand up with my team where uh, we go through what happened in performance from a spends level to transactions level from every channel level, right? So there's like a ten to fifteen minutes just every day what happened yesterday on performance. Mm. Then uh, on the growth side, what happened on the so bookings overall CM PNL yes, discount that to anyways is given. Huh. But we also look at uh, let's say the overall number of pushes, emails that went out. What were the open rates uh, of automated journeys versus the manual campaigns that went hmm. how's our quick ratio looking like so the number of new plus uh, reactivated users divided sure. by the churned out base so because that will give you a sense of quick you are ratio. growing is that a term you've invented is that an industry standard that's an industry term yeah or i'm getting educated okay so that well, that gives you a sense whether your active base is growing metric. or not right yeah. that's a metric to track if you are gunning for growth usually it's a more balance sheet or payroll topic quick ratio but i'm hearing this in this context for the first time Yeah. So and uh, yeah. So broadly, we look at and the conversion funnels, right? At the end of the day, if your funnels are not behaving the way they should, you know, uh, what was the last time you were surprised by some piece of data which maybe you found amusing or surprising or a shocker? Ah, uh, uh, okay. Something which is not intuitive because you're watching this every day, so you know, so start like trends substantially change overnight. Mm-hmm. But is there anything that happened uh, at some point which like, dude, okay, what is this going on? And then you have to double click, double click, double click to find out. 
I, let me give you an anecdote about what surprised me and and it's not from Exigo it's from sure. lens card that happened so it's basically about uh, the experimentation that you can do on videos right like videos has become huge when it comes to performance now okay. with the scale that youtube shorts and facebook is seeing on the video side mm. right it's just tremendous so the and uh, we made this video where a person was trying out that 3d try on feature on lens card right okay. where you can try out how the glasses look and we actually made it for an investor not for performance okay and we thought let's run it on performance as well right the video is already there and the ctrs on that video were 2x of all the videos that we were experimenting and running on that our cpis went straight away on that same day to half wow and like it it just came out of nowhere right like you, there was not that to the investor then you know <laughs> sorry but we found a better place to use this video <laughs> So yeah like that was a very surprising thing like you wouldn't uh, like think about this a lot but i think experimentation on the video side uh, especially when it comes to performance i think that really i mean must- also to do the fact that this is still novel at that stage and of course then uh, the competition slash the amount of experiment more people have started to do has also got a lot more that's true and you have a lot of ai tools which can you know personalize videos at yeah. scale and do that micro segmentation and what not right so uh, that is there but i think what and i realized uh, after that incident right what works very well is if you show the people what you can do on the hmm. right uh, like if you just tell the people and at exigo also we have a couple of videos where we just show the ui of the app right here's how you can book a ticket here's how the fair calendar work and it works well so in some sense people are coming into the app for the first time if they go through this aha experience even on a video the subsequent let's say engagement will just look much better Exactly. I think there's that curiosity, uh, right? So then that 3D try on also people didn't realize that okay, there's a feature like that and you could try it out. And when right. people saw that video, they were like, okay, wow, I need to try this right mm. now, right? It's it's basically like a Snapchat filter, so to say. Got it. Fair enough. You know, now that I'm wondering that uh, obviously at a salary mature stage, so all the automations that by and large can be made uh, and made to work have been working. Is there a current, let's say, you know, challenge or priority that okay, this is my next big personal project that this is what I would love to solve for? I think uh, the next thing that we are really trying to solve for is a lot more experimentation around gamification. Okay. So we did some things around scratch cards, uh, etc., to engage with people, give them reward again, basis segments, give them reward basis what we want them to do, etc. Right. Uh, but I think engagements we are working on something like predict and win for the upcoming World Cup, and okay. uh, there are some other experiments. Like in some sense, you're asking the user to come back to the app even if he doesn't have to book a ticket. Yes. Exactly. and you've seen that correlation that if he's more engaged he'll book more ah uh, yet to fill that out like scratch cards was more from a transactional standpoint that if you're opening the app for something else but i want you to let's say try out sure light booking well, or not the priority would hate you for this because then you're starting from a funnel right so it's like a uh, bottom sheet that comes up on the app launch there's a cross button there a lot of people don't scratch like typical sure. scratch rates that we saw around 20 to 12% so 90% of the people just anyways close that sheet and isn't your product team hating you for doing this So we don't like we don't force you, right? If I know that, okay, you have closed that. Once. I'm saying it's adding one more click, and as a product guy, I'll be like sensitive to my product experience. So I mean, we have had this conflict all the time because I was a part of a marketing team at a bunch of fashion e-commerce places, mm-hmm. places like that. And anything you do on the website or the product experience itself, which is tinkering somewhere, you know, your pop-up is hiding my filters. This would cause a furor. So, I mean, uh, you're better friends with them. <laughs> I guess uh, it's very important to control the frequency, of course. Here, right? Like, if I know that you have closed it once, then I'm not going to. Then you're done. Again. Yeah. Then you are done. So just one touch, you get one chance to reach out to that user within a month. Hmm. Right. Next month again, you can reach out. Till then, it's still a lot of people in your space will probably look at this whole high frequency use cases as one of the hooks to, uh, like you know, Swiggy launched in some art because groceries are much more frequent use case than that, and then yeah. they also did something with daily, and then then now. because a more frequent use case ends up being easier to make sure people have a brand recall hmm. so in your lens given that uh, most of our current categories are still need based yeah gamification will solve for it tactically but what else do you think would be interesting oh i think uh, it should help us in more uh, engagement one and hmm. two uh, so you also win something right you you win some yeah. rewards you win some vouchers you win some cash back So ultimately, that should fuel more transactions mm. as well. So that's also the hypothesis that not just engagement, but whatever vouchers am I giving to the users, they will all be Exigo related vouchers only, right? 
so in some course. sense it's basically gratifying it's the user engaging with actually. the user and you know, at, a, at, a, at a you know business level i'd be super tempted because it is insane distribution available you have that many million mouths and that many million app and so on that many people you can send something to hmm. and that could translate into some sort of an action that can be amazing for them and for you hmm. so from that lens the canvas of experimentation seems huge yeah yeah and that's where uh, i'm looking forward to all of this that's that's place out ready to go then let's hope super it. cool so great conversation manan it's been Thank a very you. interesting learning curve for me from the terms that you used to the level of maturity across the board that i'm uh, imagining but good thank you so much for joining us glad to be here